We started the iPad program this year. We got 10 iPads for the lower elementary, first, second, and third grade. And the, and the, sort of the trick of it was how, how are we going to take the new technology and use it in a way that works with what we're already doing in the classroom, which doesn't replace anything in Montessori, but enhances it and makes it better. So that was sort of a pilot program to see how we would do that. Once a long time ago, there was a Jedi being chased through space by an evil spaceship and was rescued by a spaceman and was taken back to Earth. Back home, he decided to take a swim in a swimming pool. One way that the iPad aligns with the Montessori philosophy is that it's so easy for the children to use that they can easily take it off the shelf and use it for research or to supplement something that they're doing in class, um, find the information they need, put it right back on the shelf, and go on with their other work. I also agree. Um, one of the benefits is a lot of time the children want to do research, animal research, plant research, and what they can do is take it right off the shelf, take it to any place in the classroom so it's mobile. They don't have to stick to one particular area or a desk. So that really kind of aligns with the monastery philosophy where they can move throughout the entire environment so they're not really stationary as with a desktop computer. With the iPad, they're able to move throughout the classroom and use the technology. We need to make this I thought the iPad pro um, program was pretty cool. I've never really seen a lot of iPads in a monastery classroom and the way they're used I think is very respectful to the philosophy and it's used in as, as an extension or maybe a research tool but it also has some apps that we use, the Story Kit app, to help the children just take it to the next level on some of their work and some of the animation that they could draw, they can actually maybe make something move or draw a picture that is transmittable to others without pen and paper. We're making a story. <laughs> Another thing about the story kit that's nice is that it has the audio. So a child who has a really hard time with the writing but has a story they want to tell, they can literally tell the story and have pictures that they either take off the internet or photographs that they've taken yeah. and include those in their story as well as drawn pictures. Yeah, and I think that's probably one of the biggest success. So if you do have a child that might not have the hand strength or is not really the best writer or maybe necessarily a great speller, they can mm -hmm. use this and still get their ideas out and still, you know, share in the project. And the kids think it's fun and they think it's really cool. And I guess if we utilize different apps, there's so much follow up. There's a math math facts or geography or some geometry that they can do with different apps that's just one step, you know, away from the material or one thing you know, something else they can do with it. So I think that's really cool. Yoshiko. Yoshiko is a good friend because you feel safe around her. Mm -hmm. Yoshiko is nice. <laughs> 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 Sophia. Sophia is nice. Sophia. Sophia is a good friend because she is fun and caring. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. The end. The end. The end. The end. The end. The end. Well, this, well, this is all of us, really. Is that all you guys have? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did we do?